Today, I am watching, of course I'm watching, Todd the Librarian. Louis L'Amour, which he's written a lot of badass characters, but... He was just, I think he was just getting a bit confused about what Camp Half-Blood is, and I do know that, that's from Rick Riordan. Hi guys, Dane here, and today, it is part two of my bookshelf tour. So this is bookcase number one, shelf number two, you can see the empty shelf over there. I have accidentally knocked the pile over on the floor. But I'm going to fix it. So yeah, if you saw my previous bookshelf tour video, you know the drill. I'm going to take you through the second shelf of books on my bookshelf. So without further ado, let's get started. This is Death Comes Knocking, Policing Roy Grace's Brighton by Graham Bartlett with Peter James. And basically, Graham Bartlett is a former police officer from Brighton. And this book he wrote with Peter James, the crime writer novel. And it basically investigates some of the stories that are mentioned in Peter James's books. It tells you a bit about Graham Bartlett's own career as a cop. And basically, Bartlett has worked with James as like a consultant throughout the series that he's been writing. And this book they decided to write together. I was actually asked if I wanted to read an advanced copy. So I said, yes, of course. So this is my advanced review copy, uncorrected proof, not for sale or quotation. And I was very happy about this one. Then we have Matsuo Basho, The Narrow Road to the Deep North and other travel stories. So Basho is a Japanese writer. And basically this is kind of a collection of his travel writing alongside the haiku that he wrote. And haiku, by the way, is the plural of haiku. One haiku, two haiku, in case you were wondering. I didn't just say that wrong. And uh, yeah, this is just the Penguin Classics edition of The Narrow Road to the Deep North and Other Travel Stories. Highly recommended. Discovered Basho at university through one of my lecturers and bought this and absolutely loved it. I want to read some more if possible. Getting self-conscious about my hair because I've just been in the shower and it's all fluffy, but never mind. Okay, next up we have Confessions from the Massage Couch by Paolo Bassanes. And uh, this is a massage therapist musings on the meaning of life. This is just a indie published book that I received shortly after starting socialbookshelves.com, my book blog. And it was okay. I think at the time I maybe gave it a 3.5. I think now I'd maybe downgrade that to a 2.5 or a 3. If you're interested in massage and that kind of thing, then you might find it interesting. And you do also get a few kind of stories about her clients as well. Then we have The Search by John Battelle and this is how Google and its rivals rewrote the rules of business and transformed our culture. And the guy who wrote this, uh, yeah, he's the co-founding editor of Wired and founder of the Industry Standard. And this is just the story of Google, basically. It does talk about some other search engines, but mainly it's about Google and specifically the early days of Google. So actually, it it's still kind of relevant now if you're interested in that kind of thing as, as I am, you know, because it, it does focus on the early days of Google. So even though it's now outdated, I guess, because it was focusing on that time anyway, it doesn't necessarily feel outdated. Then we have Glow by Ned Bowman. And I honestly don't really remember this. I remember this is one that I got sent. I remember that. And I do remember, actually, I posted my review of it and I think somebody disagreed with it and, you know, started almost trolling me because they, they didn't agree with my review. But anyway, this is an uncorrected proof, strictly not for sale or quotation. It was fine. I think it was about, it was, it was, it was about a drug called Glow. I think that's why I got excited because I like drug books. But it just wasn't done particularly well, at least I didn't think so. So um, yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend this one. But it does have a pretty cover, even on for an, uh, an advanced review copy, that's a nice cover. So then we have A Brief Eternity by Paul Beaumont, shortlisted for the D Dundee International Book Prize. One glorious spring day in London, Jesus Christ rudely interrupts the morning rush hour by returning to Earth. Oh, I do remember this. I think, from what I recall, this is kind of an atheist take on it as well, which is why I accepted it, but I couldn't swear by it. Yeah, just another random book in my collection, really. Then we have Waiting for Godot by Samuel Beckett. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I've only ever actually read it written down, but... um. Yeah, I really enjoyed this, actually. I read this only about a year ago now. I think I must have got this from a... Probably a charity shop. It's got a uh, Bab Lake School Coventry in here. Like when people took it out in 1983. Wow. I, I don't want to say too much about it. It's, it's kind of a classic really. So you should just give it, give it a Google rather than listen to me try and regurgitate what I remember of it. Then we have Rainforests. And this is by, who's this by? Lucy Beckett Bowman. And I bought this at a place called Trenton Monkey Forest. 
and basically it's a visitor attraction where you walk around and you can see the monkeys and this is like a little kids book that they had in their gift shop and I think I bought it because I think it was on sale but also whenever I get an opportunity to try and buy a book I usually do buy one <laughs> so I bought this one and it was all right especially for a kids book all right then we have Deborah B the last thing I remember uncorrected proof by 27 publishing I can't remember any of this story, but I do remember getting a bunch of books from 27. They, they went through a period where they sent me a lot of them. So it says here, Sarah is in a coma, unable to spee see, speak or move. She doesn't remember how she got there, but then she finds out she was attacked and that they haven't caught her attacker. So I guess it's a generic thriller, you know. Um, yeah, I don't remember it being awful, but I don't remember it being particularly good. I just don't, I don't remember it basically. A lot of these, that is the case, unfortunately. This is the same with this one. The Unround Circle by Pete Bellot. And this is, sorry, The Unround Circle and Other Stories. I'm just going to read the blurb because, again, I don't remember it. I did read it. I read all of these books. But I read a lot of books, so they start to blur together. The blurb says, just because I made it up doesn't mean it isn't true. A deformed 18th century vagabond takes on the society that deems him a monster. One middle class family's perfect Christmas turns to perfect murder. A dissatisfied housewife yearns for revenge in the form of a lottery ticket. Two lovers see themselves torn apart by the machinations of a corrupt society. A breathtaking showcase of the human condition where life, death, love, hate, pain and pleasure abound. And that's just one story. Let me have some I read more recently. This is Alan Bennett, The Clothes They Stood Up In. And this is a short story. It's almost like a modern day fable is kind of what it reads like. And I got this from where I used to work. There was a charity shop next door and they used to throw a lot of the books into the bins uh, if they weren't selling them or whatever. And this was one of those books, so I, I, I pinched it from the bin. So yeah, I picked this up just because I'd heard of Alan, Alan Bennett. And it was fantastic, I really enjoyed it. So after that, I also spotted the lady in the van in a charity shop somewhere and picked that up and really enjoyed that as well. And this is a non-fiction book I mentioned this in my January wrap-up, I think. It's a non-fiction book based upon the, the real-life story of a lady who went to live in a van in Alan Bennett's garden, basically. All right, the next little lot. Okay, over here we have some more marketing books. So this is Empowered by Josh Burnoff and Ted Shadler. And these are both from a company called Forrester that does a lot of research. And basically this is about how to empower employees and customers to you know spread the word about your business it's kind of how to encourage word of mouth marketing to take place basically fascinating at the time possibly no longer relevant i don't know i don't work in marketing anymore and this is actually the one that came before that and this is groundswell by charlene lee and josh burnoff again both of both of forrester and this is winning in a world transformed by social technologies so it's basically about the groundswell of social media marketing and how you can take advantage of that. Let's see. Copyright 2008. So whether that's still relevant or not, I'll leave it to you. This is a Haynes Cat Manual by Claire Besant. And what I like about this is that these guys do the car manuals for like the different models of car. And this is basically exactly what this is, except it's about cats. And uh, yeah, I picked this up when I first got Biggie. I just wanted to learn more about what makes a cat's tick and yeah, it's fine for a, you know, a non-fiction cat information manual. I read it from cover to cover. People would probably get, you know, more value out of it maybe if they uh, just dipped in and out of it as and when they needed to know things. But, you know, worth owning, I guess, if you have a cat. Then we have John Betjeman, Pocket Poets. And basically, every time I see one of the books in this series, I just have to buy them because they're so beautiful. It's on the really old paper where it's like almost like raised paper it's almost like the same texture as like recycled paper i don't know if you can see the little dots on the paper there it's beautiful and um yeah i quite like betjeman actually so then i also i got this one out of that charity shop skip as well and this is summoned by bells by john betjeman and i almost crap myself when i open this one because you look inside and it's got this little bit of writing in it in pencil and it's hard to tell what it says and i thought well that's weird and then, here, first edition, 1960. And then I looked it up and apparently all of the first editions were signed. So I was like, hang on, is this a signed John Betjeman book from a charity shop skip? And um, this one has that art raised paper as well, by the way. And basically I did some work and I don't think it is because I think that, that 
basically, I think the first edition things had like a frontispiece glued into it that was signed. And so I think this might actually be either a reprint of that first edition where they failed to update that, or some it was a first edition signed version and somebody removed that. But then I don't know what to make of this little bit of pencil. So if any of you guys are good at authenticating signatures and you want to let me know whether I have a signed first edition John Betjeman book, because I suspect if I do, it's probably worth a few quid. Okay, then we have Jack M. Bickham, the 38 most common fiction writing mistakes and how to avoid them. Not a huge amount to say about this. This was required reading from one of my university courses. It's all right. I mean, it has, like, the chapters are quite short. They're about five pages or so, and they each focus on a different lesson. So, for example, don't forget stimulus and response. Don't have things happen for no reason. Don't write about wimps. Don't use real people in your story. Don't consider yourself too smart. And then various bits of advice and whatnot. And yeah, if you're if you're into writing, it's fine. It's not it's not going to revolutionise the way that you write, but it might give you a few bits of inspiration and a few tips you can take away. This is Mitro by John Biggs. John Biggs is also a uh, host of TechCrunch and a senior reporter there, I believe. And basically, this is like a, almost like a children's book. I would say maybe YA. And um, I understand, I think it's like an indie press or a small press that publishes it. And um, basically it's about an, an underground metro system called the Metro, And I believe that's to do with myth as well from the title. And basically it takes you out to these other worlds. So you jump on the subway train and you come out God knows where. And actually I did really enjoy this. I thought this was quite a fun read. Okay, then I have You Took the Last Bus Home by Brian Bilston. Bilston is a poet, but he's a poet from the internet age. Uh, he's quite popular on Twitter, for example. And he writes about modern subjects. So let me read a few examples. Here's one about the selfie stick. The modern fixation upon the selfie, I find not natural, normal, nor healthy. Too much of the me, the myself, and the I. Not enough of the where, the how, or the why. Selfies are senseless, I'd much rather snap. The them and the those, the what and the that. Eager stroker of ego, photographic spam. Bedroom or bathroom, I click, ergo I am. Narcissistic reflections in camera phone glory. If a selfie could vote, then it would vote Tory. And this is published by Unbound, who are this pretty cool, innovative press that basically do crowdfunding publishing. So you submit as normal, and if you get accepted, you then have to kind of build up enough pledges in the form of essentially pre-orders for people to get the book. And uh, I was sent a copy of this for review and I loved it. Okay, next up we have The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. Fantastic book. I actually know part of, I believe it's chapter one as opposed to the prologue. But I know part of the line and it's uh, like the brief doomed flare of a thousand exploding suns that registers dimly on blind men's eyes. The beginning of the horror passed almost unnoticed. Cracking line. And it's called here the most terrifying novel ever written. Steve Jobs, The Man Who Thought Different, which is a biography by Karen Blumenthal. And this is one of the better books on Steve Jobs. I think it's Walter Isaacs, who's done another one that's meant to be very good, which I haven't got to. But yeah, it's just a fascinating little biography on Steve Jobs. It's not super long, easy to absorb. If you want to learn more about Steve Jobs, you know where to go. Okay, then we've got some Enid Blyton. So we have, so we have The Enchanted Wood, we have The Folk of the Faraway Tree, we have The Magic Faraway Tree, and we have Up the Faraway Tree. And these are, not surprisingly, titled The Faraway Tree Books. And I used to love these as a kid, and every now and then I do like to dip back into them. I think I've got one of these books coming up for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. And basically, these kids go up a faraway tree in the middle of a forest, and at the top of it, there's a branch that pokes through the clouds, and every day there's a different land at the top, so the land of topsy-turvy, or the land of take what you want. And these are just fantastic children's books. I mean, I don't like kids and don't want to have them, but if I do, I will be reading these books to them. Then we also have my battered copy of The Magical Adventures of the Wishing Chair, which is two books in one. Does it say which two? The Adventures of the Wishing Chair and the Wishing Chair again. And, uh, you know, you basically know what you're getting with a wishing chair. There's also, I believe, a little goblin dude or an elf in it. Then we have The Tilted Truth by Ken Bowes. This is an erotic thriller of intrigue, manipulation and deception. It's book one in The Desire is a Vicious Mistress trilogy. So this is one that, again, I was sent near to the start of me running my book blog. And actually, I really enjoyed this. It is an erotic thriller, 
but in the true sense of the word, in that it actually, if you took all the sex out, it would still work as a thriller novel in itself. There's lots of kind of political intrigue. I mean, I'm no by no means a connoisseur of the erotic thriller novel, but I read it, so. Here's one I got from my old office. They had a bunch of books lying about, um, and they were gonna get rid of a load of them, so I just went through and took out the ones that sounded interesting. So this is Elephants on Acid and Other Bizarre Experiments by Alex Bose. From zombie kittens to tickling machines, the most outrageous experiments from the history of science. And it's, as it sounds, a non-fiction book that looks at these various experiments that scientists have carried out. As you might imagine, scientists are pretty weird guys and they test very odd things like giving elephants acid. Then we have Complete Uses of a Dead Cat by Simon Bond. And this is three in one. 101 uses of a dead cat, 101 more uses of a dead cat, and uses of a dead cat in history. Here you go, here's an example of one being used as a pencil sharpener. So it's literally just a book of little cartoons like that. And it's fine, you know. It is what it is. Now we come towards the end of the stack. So we have here Simon Booker without trace. This is another uncorrected proof from 2017 press, so another thriller. He went to prison for the murder of his wife and daughter. She got him released. Now her daughter is missing. Honestly, don't really remember it. Again, I, I would remember if it was bad. So it was fine. It just wasn't amazing, I guess. Then we have Scum by Eddie Bowley and a few fun facts about this one. First of all, this is the first book that I reviewed on my book blog when I got it. The second is that the guy who wrote this is on YouTube. He runs a channel called Ed Ake and he's uh, like a voice actor and animator. He also ran a Twitter account for the Essex Lion when the there was a, a lion that escaped and was on the run in Essex here in the UK. So he was running a Twitter account for the lion being like, just ate a few more chavs for Brecky bruv and stuff like this. It was very entertaining. And I actually saw him do a speech once at a social media week event. So yeah, I found out that he'd written a book and I thought I'd check it out. And it's pretty entertaining. I mean, again, it's kind of an indie release, but um, pretty good for an indie book. And also great if you're into games and that kind of stuff, because it's full of those kind of references. And we have some Ray Bradbury. So we have Fahrenheit 451, which I loved. I mean, again, it's just another dystopian, really. If you haven't read Fahrenheit 451, but you like things like 1984, The Handmaid's Tale, Brave New World, all that kind of stuff, this should just definitely be on your list. It takes its title from the temperature at which books burn. And uh, yeah, great book. And The Illustrated Man, which is Ray Bradbury short stories. And I was actually given a copy of this for Secret Santa by someone I used to work with. Shout out to Izzy, who is definitely not watching. But yeah, she got me a copy of this. And obviously I'd read Fahrenheit 451 and really enjoyed it. So I was keen to get stuck in. And I read this in about a day, I think. It was great. Then we have The Time Torch by Dermot Bradley. You can tell this is self-published or independently published by the Microsoft Paint cover of it there. The idea being is that there is a torch that can see into the past and that's about all I'm going to tell you. I do remember this one and I do remember it not being very good. But again, this is another one that I got sent in the early days of my blog. And at the time, I used to just accept pretty much anything that people sent to me. How times have changed. I get offered maybe 30, 40 bucks a week at least. So this is cut from The Rushes by Andrea Brady and this is a poetry collection by a press called Reality Street here in the UK. And uh, Reality Street used to publish one of my lecturers at uni. And so I did a little research into the press. I actually interviewed their managing director, who's a poet himself, a guy called Ken Edwards. And um, basically they do this thing, it's a subscription model where if you subscribe to it, then you get a certain number of books free and you also get your name in the book as a, a, you know, as a supporter. So I did that for a couple of years and this is one of the free poetry books I got. And yeah, it's pretty interesting, especially if you're into more experimental poetry, because that's what Reality Street tend to focus on. Then we have One Click, Jeff Bezos and the Rise of Amazon.com by Richard L. Brandt. And this is kind of considered to be the definitive book on Jeff Bezos, or at least it was when I read it in about uh, 2009 or something. And it basically covers the whole patenting of the one-click system that Amazon had, and basically it meant no other website could use it, which is one of the reasons why Amazon became so popular. And it's just really interesting to discover the various different, you know, business decisions that they made that made sense. That is why Bezos is now one of the world's richest men and why we all know Amazon. Then we have how the internet is how is the internet changing the way you think, the net's impact on our minds and future, edited by John Brockman. And again, I read this probably 2010, 2011, but it pulled together a bunch of scientific studies and different essays and that kind of thing to cover how the internet is changing the way we think. For example, even that you know that th th we all Google information now, it means that we're quicker to forget things like dates and stuff like that 
because we know we can easily access it again. So instead, we're actually learning how to retrieve information rather than the information itself, which I think is fascinating. And I got this from like a shop's bargain bin. And uh, although it looks massive, it's only yeah 408 pages. It's not too massive and it's got pretty large print. And I thought it was really good, especially because I got it from a bargain bin, you know. Okay, then we have Max Brooks, The Zombie Survival Guide. I haven't actually read World War Z yet, so this is the only Max Brooks, Brooks book that I've read. But yeah, fascinating. If you like zombies, you'll like this. It also helped me to develop my zombie survival plan. So my plan is to get a houseboat, float it into the middle of the Thames, drop an anchor. As long as zombies can't swim, I'm safe in my boat, mate. Just fill it up with supplies. I'm good. Then we have Death Cat Sally by P.S. Brooks, and this is kind of a YA novel, I guess. After 17-year-old Sally Rancher knocks over a cat named Zachary, it's only the start of her nightmare. So I believe she starts to see this cat's ghost around and stuff. The main thing I remember about this actually is that it came with a really nice bookmark and a few other bits of swag and stuff from the author. So again, this is one that I got sent. If you're into YA, perhaps you want to check it out. And finally, last book for this shelf. And it is Terry Brooks, Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, based on the screenplay and story by George Lucas. So yeah, this is a novelization of Star Wars Episode 1. And considering the source material, it's alright. Uh, I think there are probably other Star Wars books that I'd recommend above this, like all the old Expanded Universe books. I used to love those. And then Disney bought Star Wars and declared all those non-canon, which was a shame because I'd read about 20 of them or something. But... um. Yeah, it's fine. I think I probably picked this up around about the time that the movie came out. So it shows how long it's been since I've read it. But Terry Brooks is a decent enough writer. Like I say, the, the source material wasn't great, but he did a pretty good job with it, considering. So anyway, that's about it for this episode of my bookshelf tour. Please do let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here and you'd like to see more. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.